Hello and welcome to pmclounge.com. This video falls in the category of technical stuff that agile project managers, project managers, scrum masters, they should be aware of. And we are specifically talking about the software industry. The topic of this video is the difference between technical debt or tech debt and maintenance. Now, since we've been talking about agile and extreme programming, and we, you know, talk in terms of sprints and weekly cycles, and it's like thinking as if we are delivering new stuff every sprint or every cycle, right? But that is not always the case. And that is where this question stems from. What exactly is tech debt? What exactly is maintenance? Where do they fit in the uh, whole context of agile, right? So first of all, let's try to understand what these two concepts are. A lot of people basically use these two words interchangeably, but they are not the same tech debt versus maintenance, right? So they have very different roles in uh, how we build and even maintain software. So what do these terms really mean? And you know, why should we care about the difference between them? So first of all, knowing the distinction is important because it influences how we approach our work, how we, uh, you know, prioritize tasks and ultimately how successful our projects really are. So if we understand these uh, concepts in simple terms, we will be able to differentiate between tech debt and maintenance. And at the same time, we will be able to understand the fact that these are also important. Uh, you know, delivering new feature every sprint is great, right? That's what gets you rewards and recognition and all that. But at the same time, uh, maintaining and taking care of your tech debt is equally, if not more important. So again, this is totally related to software development. First of all, let's talk about tech debt. So imagine you are uh, basically in a hurry to clean your room before some guests arrive. So instead of putting everything in its proper place, you basically quickly shove things around, maybe under the bed or in the wardrobe, right into your closet or whatever, right? So right now, since guests are arriving and you are in a hurry, you basically put things away uh, and you hide those things, right? Whatever mess that your, uh, that your room had. Now, technically speaking, your room looks clean, right? And that's what tech debt is all about. It is a quick fix. It is a shortcut that can speed up your delivery. But at the same time, remember, you have not cleared your mess. You have just shoved it under the bed or into your closet, right? You have to ensure that the mess gets cleaned up. And that is an important point when it comes to tech debt. So it is a quick fix. It is a shortcut uh, in your code. It can help you meet deadlines or it can help you, you know, launch features faster. But just like that hidden mess that we talked about, tech debt is not going to disappear. So it is going to stick around and it can even cause bigger problems down the line. An example is something that we already talked about. It can lead to problems later. It may require more time and effort to fix rather than what you would have needed if you were going to fix it in the first place, right? Instead of hiding it, uh, if you were going to fix it in the first place, it is possible that it might have taken lesser time. Now, in terms of software development, what are some examples of tech debt? It could be legacy code. It could be insufficient testing, right? Because you had to deliver faster. So you did the bare minimum testing. So you, you've met a certain uh, quality, but there were more tests that you could have run. Um, there could be outdated libraries or there could be dependencies, even documentation. There could be lack of documentation and you don't want to wait for documentation to be complete to launch your uh, next version of the app or launch your software or whatever, right? So even if the documentation is outdated one, you still go ahead and you still launch because that's that's a tech debt, right? You want to make sure documentation is up to date, but you want to do that later. 
just like how you wanted to clean your room before the guests arrived. Other examples could be suboptimal architecture, uh, maybe inconsistent coding standards that your teams are using just to launch quickly. So all of these are examples of tech debt. Now let's talk about maintenance. Maintenance is different, right? The ongoing work of fixing bugs and improving existing systems. That's the definition of maintenance. Now something in the room might need fixing, might need maintenance. And that's the example of maintenance, right? So it is all about taking care of things over time. So your room was clean, but let's say over the course of few months, the bookshelf got messier and you need to basically spend some time to uh, clean up the bookshelf, right? So that's what maintenance is all about. It's the work that you do to fix small issues and it helps keep everything, the entire software, the entire system in a good condition. That is what maintenance is all about. In software, maintenance can involve, let's say if some of the examples are, you know, fixing bugs, updating systems, you might not be upgrading or updating your systems. Uh, that's something which is a maintenance activity as well. You might want to make improvements to keep everything, uh, you know, to ensure everything runs smoothly. Those are some of the examples of maintenance. It's also about ensuring the long term stability and functionality of your software rather than, you know, just hiding the mess that you had created. So that's what maintenance is all about. It ensures long term stability. It ensures your functionality. Now, one of the things that gets overlooked a lot, and that is the reason why maintenance has this reputation of boring work, right? Has this reputation of uh, your uh, most capable engineers not uh, being interested in doing maintenance stuff. They don't want to fix old bugs. Well, the reason for that is uh, when you launch new features, that's what gets you rewards and recognition and, you know, excitement and all that. But maintenance, maintaining the existing system, that is also very, very challenging and intellectual work. And that is also something that should be rewarded. That is where you as a project manager, as a scrum master, as an agile leader, that is where you need to step in and you need to recognize people working on maintenance, people working on tech debt and give them the importance that they deserve. And it should not be a boring job, right? Because it is helping you keep your systems up and running. So that is why you as a project manager, as an agile leader, you should be aware of concepts like tech debt, concepts like maintenance, reasons why people don't want to do it. And think of this, right? Uh, maintenance is, is actually intellectually very challenging because if you ask someone to fix code, uh, which is an existing code and there is some defect and you want someone to fix it, first of all, they need to understand the existing code. It is possible that they didn't even write that code. So they are going to go over that entire code understand it, understand what is broken and then fix it, then write code that can uh, fix it, right? So this is an intellectually challenging job as well. It should get the reward and recognition that it deserves. So that is why maintenance is extremely important. Tech debt is extremely important. In fact, in the next slide, let's do a quick comparison of the two. Uh, some of the pros of tech debt are it's quick, it is a creative solution, right? You're introducing you using some creativity, right? And it gives you immediate results. So on one hand, tech debt can feel creative and innovative, but that's only in the short term, right? In the long run, you need to fix things. You need to clean up your act. So it is obviously about coming up with quick solutions. It is about getting immediate results, but it can result to bigger issues later, which is uh, the biggest con of tech debt, right? You may fall into bigger problems later if you don't clean up the tech debt. So if it is not managed carefully, tech debt can accumulate, it can slow down your development process and it can make future projects difficult. Now let's talk about maintenance. So maintenance is about long term stability, right? That's what we are doing. Obviously, it is less flashy. It can be seen as a grunt work. It's but again, it's intellectually challenging. It's intellectually uh, rewarding. It challenges 
coders, developers to dig deep into existing systems. They solve complex problems. Uh, maintenance often does not get the recognition, which is why you as a project manager, as an agile leader should be aware of this. Now, why do both tech debt and maintenance matter? I hope you are able to understand that uh, tech debt is not always a bad thing. It might feel like because of the example that we used, and it might feel like, you know, you're, you're cleaning up your room, but you're just shoving things under your bed. You're not necessarily cleaning it. Well, sometimes that is also required. So in the short term, it may, you know, it might appear as a bad thing, but in the short term, it is something which is critical. It is something that we need to basically do. Now, tech debt can pile up and it can create a lot of extra work later, but that is where maintenance also comes in. If you do regular maintenance, it will help you keep your systems running smoothly and it is going to prevent tech debt from getting out of control, right? And that's where tech debt and maintenance, these two uh, different uh, railway lines meet and intersect, right? If you are able to put in time aside for your teams to be able to do maintenance, to take care of tech debt, tech debt is not really a bad thing. It will help you launch features quickly, but later you need to ensure as a project manager, as an agile leader, you give some time for your teams to work on maintenance. You give maintenance the importance and you give maintenance uh, the recognition that it really deserves so that your project or your systems don't get overburdened by tech debt. So that's something which is important to wrap things up, understanding the difference between tech debt and maintenance. It is a key to managing your software projects effectively. So let's make sure we give maintenance the recognition it deserves and manage tech debt wisely to ensure long term success of your projects. Now, before I let you go, here's a question for this video. Do you have sprints or time that you dedicate to maintenance or tech debt? Let me know in the comments. Very, very important that I get to know what you think about tech debt and maintenance now. Do you think this is important enough that you should give extra time to your team? Let's your next feature can wait for two more weeks or maybe one more month, but let's bring tech debt down. Let's work on maintenance. Is that something that you would do as a project manager? I think it is very critical and very important for us to understand concepts like these so that we can take the right decisions. But definitely let me know in the comments. What do you think? Do you have sprints? Have you worked in an environment where they had sprints or time dedicated for maintenance and tech debt? So that's all that we had in this video. Definitely keep learning and check our other videos out. If you like our work, consider contributing by heading over to pmclounge.com slash contribute. Like, share, subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.